Enigma is arguably the most powerful item in the entire game, because it completely opens up the endgame by allowing every class to use the skill teleport, and the other stats aren't so bad either. This rune world requires some extremely rare runes though, which usually requires you to trade in your rare loot, a big chunk of luck, or an insane amount of grinding. I recently did a challenge with this paladin where I beat the entire game without any gear, so here he was, completely gearless at the start of the endgame. So I thought I might as well try and farm the runes for Enigma as soon as possible. It would be a huge upgrade for the character, and I thought it would be an interesting experiment to see how long it took. And it took way longer than I expected. I should really have crunched some numbers before attempting this. I'm doing this in single player on a completely cell phone character, so obviously no trading or multiplayer, but also no starting gear or other help from any of my other characters via the shared stash. Before I started the hunt for high runes, I needed some basic gear. I had initially planned for this to be a separate video, but it turned out to be kind of boring watching me do 10 minute countess runs with a naked character. So instead, here's a recap of the initial gearing process. The most reliably farmed starting gear is rune words, so I began by farming the countess in hell with a holy bolt paladin. The runs weren't fast, but it was quite safe and easy even without any gear, since every enemy in the Forgotten Tower is either demon or undead, and the narrow corridors and doorways makes it so that you're usually only attacked from one direction. I found the runes for spirit, insight, lore and stealth, as well as some other magical and rare items to fill all of my gear slots. I then respec to a hammered in and began farming normal and nightmare cows for base items to make spirit heal. I didn't want to waste a socketing quest on a crystal sword, so finding the bases for spirit took longer than I hoped for, several hours of grinding, but I did eventually find both a broadsword and a decent paladin shield with 4 sockets. I also tried my luck with some magic find runs in the pits, Kravinkal and some terror zones, including terrorized Andario. I did find some decent starter gear, but my magic find was really low and my clear speed mediocre, so it felt like a lot of work with not much to show for it. The most notable find was a single arm rune. I ended up spending almost 10 hours in preparation before I even started the rune hunt. That was a bit more than I had planned, mostly thanks to it taking so long to find the spirit bases. But I did manage to put together some decent starting gear. Nothing to brag about on the internet, but it was enough to get the hammered in going. I was wearing a spirit sword together with a spirit shield, which was the foundation for this character and those two items together was probably more powerful than the rest of my gear combined. I also wore a lore helm and a magical amulet with some skills. I bought the armor socketed with some runes for resistances, though I would eventually replace this with a stealth rune word for the faster cost rate and run speed. Gloves with resistances, a rare FCR ring, a crafted caster belt, a dwarf star and some boots with faster run walk. To be able to make the enigma I would need a jar rune and a bear rune, or 3 bear runes, or 6 sir runes, or 12 low runes, or 24 ohm runes, or I found it best not to think about how many runes I would need to cube or find but instead got straight into farming, and I started out in lower crust, opening super chests with a player settings of 7. This is as far as I know the most efficient way to farm enigma, even though you can't find a jar rune from the chests. This was a good place to start since it didn't require me to kill monsters, just run as fast as I could, avoid damage and open chests. Though even with very limited gear, the Hammerding could slowly handle monsters even on player 7 if needed. Before I even started the run counter while looking for a good map, I found a paladin shield with 4 open sockets and 44 to all resistances, which makes for a great spirit base, quite a bit better than the one I was currently wearing. I did not have the runes to make another spirit right away, but I got around to upgrading it eventually. The rune hunt had officially started, and 17 runs in the drops were kicked off on my first humble little lamb rune. It was unlikely that this was going to be cubed all the way up to be included in the enigma, but it is the lowest rune which I personally qualify as an interesting find, at least on a new character, so for the sake of this video I will only mention rune drops of lamb or higher. On run 41 I found a really nice small charm. A fine small charm of Vida, with the important 3 to max damage and decent rolls on the other stats. This would have been really nice for another character focusing on physical damage. There are also a lot of charms to be found in Lower Karast, but since my focus is on runes, I will only mention the really good charms I find and then I will try to do some kind of recap at the end. Then I unfortunately had a dry streak of 200 runs, it sounds like a lot, and it was, but it is to be expected of Diablo 2 and Lower Corrost in particular. The streak was broken by a Gull rune, which isn't that exciting on its own, but it is half a Vex rune, which could mean a big upgrade in the form of the Heart of the Oak rune word. 
I then found a pal rune on run 290 and another lamb on run 361. I was very focused on opening the chest as fast as possible, skipping almost everything else to get the run time shorter. My average run time was a little bit over 45 seconds, including load times and managing my inventory and stash, which I thought was pretty decent. I like it when runs are under a minute, because then it feels like the run counter is ticking up fairly fast, but this is a lot slower than what a sorceress with teleport and telekinesis can do. And then on round 364, I found my first high rune. A low rune. Not exactly what I was looking for for this character, but I couldn't complain. This could perhaps come in useful later as either a grief for smiting the ubers or a fortitude for my mercenary. My first decent drop from something else than a super chest came on round 412, when a log gave me a lem rune. I had a staff with teleport charges on my weapon switch, but I only used it to teleport from the waypoint into the first hut to save a little bit of time. Using it too much would mean I have to repair it too often, costing both time and gold. On round 460, I teleported off the waypoint and found a mal rune in the very first chest. That was then followed by a pal rune 30 runs later. And another 30 runs later, I found the highest rune so far, a sir rune. Nice, that's half of a bear rune, and while I was of course hoping for an actual bear rune to drop, at least the runes had been dropping fairly consistently, but little did I know that that was about to change. For the next 250 rounds I found absolutely nothing. I can't stress this enough, if you are going to farm lower Karost, set up a TV or a second monitor with something to watch while you run, because grinding lower Karost is really boring, and farming for hours with nothing to show for it can be very demotivating. The dry streak was eventually broken around 767 when I found another gull rune. I should maybe have saved all of the runes towards the enigma, but I took the other gull and a pull out of the stash, cubed the two gull runes to make a vex, and made the heart of the oak rune word which is going to be the endgame weapon for this character. It rolled a 37 to all resist which is a good roll that I was happy with. I unfortunately did not have enough stat points saved to get the required decks right away, but that turned out to be an opportunity for a well deserved break from the rune grind. I was pretty close to a level up, so it shouldn't take too long anyway. And while doing so, I found a unique grand charm. This character's very first kid's fortune, and a decent roll too. Magic find doesn't help with the drops from super chest in lower Karast, but it was surely going to be useful later. I got the level up, equipped my shiny new weapon, and went back to the grind. Not even 20 runs later, I found an actual Vex rune. Now I was suddenly really hoping that I wouldn't end up being exactly one Vex rune short from cubing a bear later on and regret making the Hoto. Then I only found a Mal rune on round 960, as well as a Pal rune on 977, before I hit the milestone of 1000 runs. After 1000 runs done, which took just under 14 hours of playtime, I had found a little less than one bear rune worth of runes in total. And for clarity, when I talk about rune values in this video, I always mean in terms of what I can make in the cube, not trade value online. This result was decent progress towards the goal, or a big waste of time depending on how you look at it. The only charm I mentioned was the fine small charm of Vida, but I had found a decent pile of charms in total that I saved in the stash. Unfortunately no paladin combat skillers, or any really good skillers at all to be honest. And of course a lot of crafting ingredients and mid-level runes, but I eventually stopped picking up most of these because the stash tabs were filling up really quickly. To break up the grinding, I decided to try my luck at Travencall with a player setting of 3. The council members have a good chance to drop high runes all the way up to Cham, including the Jar rune I needed. But make no mistake, when I say good drop chance I mean compared to other monsters, the chance is still incredibly low. In addition I was also way more likely to find other good items like uniques from Travencall than from Lower Karast. And on the very first run I found a unique ring, which turned out to be a Ravenfrost. A good omen perhaps? Well, not really. I found Travencall to currently be too hard for my character, the runs took a bit too long and were a bit too dangerous, so after completing 20 runs and deciding that they were currently not worth it, I crawled back to Lower Karast for round 2, but I will come back to Travencon later for many more runs, once Lower Karast has really broken my spirit. My return to Lower Karast started off rather slow with nothing in the first 150 runs, and then a pal rune on round 1158, followed by two lem runes on runs 1170 and 1205. Then I found perhaps the best small charm I have ever found, or at least very close to it. Around 1320 I found a shimmering small charm of Vida. Unfortunately neither of the rolls were perfect, but still quite good. This will likely be used on many of my characters to come. 200 runs later I finished run number 1523, which was exactly 1000 runs since I found the last good rune with the Sir, though this milestone was really not a cause for celebration. 
On round 1640, Mother Nature felt sorry for my string of bad drops and hid a unique pair of javelins in a log. These were Titan's Revenge, which are absolutely great on the Javason, but while it's not the most important for this item, the rule was pretty bad. While I did watch things in the background while doing these runs, I could not stop paying attention. See if you can spot the orange flash when I open this chest on ROM 1696 before it goes away. Absolute insanity. We need some kind of loot filter in this game and we need it now. But at least this was finally another good rune drop. Unfortunately it wasn't a bear this time either, but this servant meant that I had at least acquired the bear required for Enigma. Or should I say the first bear. Anyway, it was just so nice to make some progress towards the Enigma and break up the streak of bad luck I was facing. Though after that sir, I only found a single lem rune on round 1819 before I hit 2000 runs. Wow, the second half of those runs were really terrible compared to the first. Not only the quality of the other drops, but also the quantity. I had now spent over 26 hours in lower Karast in total. This was of course spread out over several days, but what a grind. And the bad luck in the second half was not good for my motivation to push on. I was expecting to have to do a few thousand of these runs for the Enigma, but I was really hoping to have found more runes at this point, sitting only at a single bear rune and some change. After hitting this milestone, two things were on my mind. First, what was I thinking? Why did I think this would be a good idea? And secondly, I needed to switch it up and farm something else, even if it meant being less efficient in theory. So I swapped my gear around for a bit more survivability and got my faster cost rate up to the 125% breakpoint and decided to give Travencall another try. Before I started, I cubed up most of the runes that I had found so far, including making the bear rune. I cubed every rune from Fallen up, and afterwards the stash looked a bit empty to be honest. Going from 75 to 125 FCR made the trav runs noticeably quicker than the last time, and I also re-rolled my map so that all the council members spawned outside of the temple. The runs weren't quite as fast as in Lower Kurost, but I felt like the run times were at least decent. They were still dangerous though if they spawned with something like Cursed or the Conviction Aura, but after setting into the flow of runs I could do them pretty safely and consistently. The first rune drop from the council came on run 78, and it was a Mel rune. On round 89 I found a unique serpent skin armor. This is of course the skin of the viper magi and I got a great roll with just one of perfect on the all resist roll. I was of course hoping to replace this with the enigma as soon as possible but for now this was a nice upgrade for the character over the stealth armor that he was wearing and I actually think this is the best roll or maybe tied for best that I have found in Diablo 2 resurrected as I know for a fact that I have yet to find a perfect one. More good unique loot came on round 110 when I found Andariel's visage. It would have been cool if it was ethereal, but even as is, my mercenary will eventually find this quite useful I think. The first piece of unique jewelry since my return to Travencall dropped on run 124. This time it was a Nagel ring with one of perfect on the magic find, but I have a feeling that this character will have a hard time fitting a ring without the FCR into his gear. On round 140 I found Skaldr's Ire, and while it gives a lot of magic find, I needed the FCR and the resist of my current armor. Then I had a string of OK rune drops starting with an Am rune on 205, a Lem rune on 211, and a Pal on 224. On round 298 I found a unique Dash Shroud, Ormus Rose. While Chain Lightning isn't a completely unusable skill, I don't think I would ever find a use for this armor. On round 316 I found another Mal rune. And then another one 75 runs later on 381. I believe Mal was the most common rune I found during this video, if I'm not counting mid runes like Rel that is. I found another neat little small charm around 397, with 7% magic find coupled with a decent roll of cold resist. I have found this once before, and while I haven't ever used it on a character yet, it's a nice item to find just because it's so rare. On round 560 I found a nice rare circlet. It was a really good helm for this paladin, especially since I was running in Act 3, so I valued the faster run walk very highly. A nice and somewhat unexpected upgrade for the helm slot. On round 578 I had a triple drop of decent items, a Russia's weapon, Mavina's gloves and a unique amulet. Now neither of them was anything special, at least not for this character, but it was cool to find all three in the same drop. And I got another multi drop on round 650 when I found a set and a unique amulet on the same round. Unfortunately, neither was anything special this time either. I then had some minorly interesting drops over the next 50 rounds, like a Lem Rune, a Cat's Eye, a Ravenfrost, and a Tal's Belt with a terrible roll. 
Diablo 2 is truly a game of randomness and something that can happen is that you can get really unlucky for long stretches of time and then really lucky all at once. And for the first 700 crab rounds I felt pretty unlucky, finding only a few truly noteworthy items at all. But then all of a sudden it completely turned around. On round 701 I found another unique ring. Another Ravenfrost, but this time it was a really good roll, perfect on the dexterity and a pretty high roll on the attack rating too. I think this might be the best Ravenfrost I have found. And on round 720 I found my first rainbow facet. This kind of surprised me since the council is supposedly a good place to farm for facets, but I guess I was only using 150 or so magic find, but still. And it rolled one of perfect fire, with the also important minus 5 to the enemy resist, a very decent find. Then only 4 runs later, the council dropped their first high rune, another sir rune. This was such a relief since it had now been another 1000 runs since I last found a good rune, and this also marked the halfway point to the enigma, or slightly past it if I take all the runes into account. Still a long way to go, but this was important for my motivation to keep grinding. But the lucky streak was far from over, because just a few runs later I found another rainbow facet, and this time it was of the poison variety and it rolled a perfect 5-5 on the stats. An awesome drop, but it was still not done, because just 10 runs later, another serum drop. Truly nothing for hours upon end, and then all at once. So to recap, in a span of less than 20 runs, I found 2 serums or a bear, and 2 good facets. I had been spending every eighth rune I found on crafting caster belts, and in town on round 749 I finally managed to craft one with 10% faster cost rate, and this was going to be an important piece of my gear once I finished the enigma to reach the highest faster cost rate point. It is of course outclassed by arachnid mesh, but crafted caster belts are a great little piece of budget gear for casters that I think people sometimes forget about. I then found another facet, but this time I was due for a bad roll, and then another pal roll, before good luck would strike again. I went to town to spend some of the gold that kept building up from the council, since I had a decent circlet now and I was planning to do a lot of amulet crafting once I was a little bit higher level, I decided to gamble boots, hoping for a nice pair of rares with faster run walking magic find. And since the difference in gold cost between different types of boots is so small at this level, I decided to gamble light plated boots just for the tiny chance that I would gamble a pair of war travelers. Ridiculous ridiculous odds I know, but on just the fourth gamble I actually got the War Travelers. Just let me emphasize how insane that is. Not only is it rare to get a unique item from gambling, but it also needed to roll to be upgraded to battle boots instead of light plated boots on the same gamble. And to top it off it was a really good roll too. Moments like this still get me to jump out of my chair even after so many years of Diablo 2. After 800 runs I paused to reassess the situation, with the two recent serums I had gone from being behind schedule to being pretty close to my goal. Well, still a bear rune short, but I felt a lot closer, and as I was now missing a bear rune rather than a jar rune, I decided to go back to lower Karas since it is in theory faster, and 800 runs in Travencal was a decent break, so I felt ready to endure another 1000 runs or so. Saying this out loud while recording has me wondering, am I crazy, are Diablo 2 players inherently insane? Well, that's a bit too much introspection, less thinking, more grinding. I continue the runs where I left off, and 94 runs in, or around 2094 in total, I found my very first and unfortunately only Paladin Combat Skiller. It even had a little bit of life on it too, even if the roll was on the low side. A very nice find, and one that I had been looking forward to. For comparison, my defensive aura skiller count was now up to 5 in total. Other than that skiller, my return to LK started off slow, but not completely fruitless. My rune stash kept on slowly building up, with a mal rune on round 2210, and then another one on round 2292. On round 2345, I found a nice little small charm with perfect lightning resist and a decent bit of life, though the life roll is far from perfect. Still, small charms with two good stats are always nice to find and very useful. Then more runes with a mal on round 2464 and I think my brain shut off here because I'm not sure what I was doing while trying to show the rune for the video but I ended up dying to some random monsters. And then another gull rune on round 2472 and this was a notable drop because now I'd reached the point where if I had not used a vex rune to make my heart of the oak I could have cubed all the way up to another sir rune. I did want a hotu on this character eventually, but now I kind of regretted making it because I just wanted to be done with the enigma grind and leave lower Kurost behind. Though even if I had that sir, I would still be another sir short, so maybe it wouldn't end up mattering if I could find a bear rune. I kept on finding decent runes that made me feel like I made some progress, but in reality they didn't push me that much closer to my end goal, like this pal rune on round 2492, or a mal rune on 2614 or another mal on round 2640. Seriously, what was it with all the mal runes? But I guess I shouldn't complain about mal runes because on round 2765 I found a lamb. 
but the pendulum swung the other way next and on run 2786 I found an East room. I would describe my return to Lower Karast as uneventful progress. Things kept slowly going forward, but I was not really excited by any individual drop. But that was about to change. On run 2800 I found the first non-facet jewel which I found worth including in the video. A ruby jewel of fervor. Now anytime this drops I can't not think about how I wish this, this was the enhanced damage and attack speed jewel, because that is also called ruby jewel of fervor, but this was still an awesome find. I'm probably going to put it in the Andoriel's visage that I found earlier and make a nice gift for my mercenary. Ideally I would want to wait for an ethereal one to drop, but always waiting for something a little better is also a good way to never use any of your good loot. And then around 2818 I was finally blessed with another high rune. And it was another sir rune, so it was my fifth sir rune in total. I did feel a little bit unlucky that not a single one of those could have been a bear rune to speed up the process, but it was what it was. The situation where I'm missing the Vex rune that I put in my Hoto had become a reality, but that honestly didn't bother me too much, I was now so close to the finish line that I just kept on going. And about 50 runs later I did my final lower cross run. Another Gull rune. Now it wasn't a bear or a sir, but it was enough. Now here's a fair warning, if you're sensitive to seeing rune value wasted, I suggest you look away now, because I'm about to cube all of these runes. This is truly the dark side of the single player experience. So here I was at last, I had finally gotten my Ja, Ith and Bear runes for the Enigma, now just to make the rune word. Whoops, that doesn't go first. With a sigh of relief it was finally done, I had farmed a self found Enigma completely from scratch. Here's a few quick stats about the runs, I did a total of 2866 lower Karast runs and 800 Travancal runs, those took 39 hours and 13 hours respectively. Those times include load times, inventory management, identifying and selling loot, repairing my gear etc. I did find a lot of decent charms, but I only mentioned the best ones during the highlights. I found 25 skillers in total, and 6 of them were bow and crossbow skillers for the Amazon, and 5 were defensive skillers for the Paladin. I also found 5 7% magic find small charms, as well as several 5 and 6% ones that I saved in my stash. So now that I have the enigma, what adventures am I off to? What grand challenge am I going to tackle next? Thanks for watching, if you want more rune hunting in Lower Karast check this video out where I get much more lucky than in this experiment. I severely underestimated how much of a grind farming the enigma would be, and I blame the luck I had in this video for warping my expectations. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. For more info, click the join button or the link in the description of the video.